Hello, we're in Malta working through some wooden objects today. I'm showing you today two altar sticks, um, candlesticks. They will have had a spike on, making them a pricket stick or pricket holder. They might have just a plain sconce on, making them just a candlestick. So you have cricket stick, you have candlestick, you have altar stick. Altar sticks belong to churches. In a home, you could have a similar pair of candlesticks, which would be called an altar stick if they're in a church, and would therefore not be an altar stick if they're in a home, even if the same item. So you have a whole range of words. So when you're doing your, your Google search to look at the market to see what they should be priced at, you, you've got to look at pricket candlesticks, candlesticks, altar sticks, and then you get the whole range. So I hope that's a helpful start. Age. Now, these are 18th century, meaning they're 17 something, and I would say that these are 1720 to 1750. Um, and there are very few 18th century candlesticks left on the market. The reason there are very, 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 very few is because the, the rarity uh, has meant that the early ones have been absorbed by collectors and the appearance of these on the market is just so rare. The problem you have is they made the same design in the Victorian era and they made them in the Edwardian era. And the very great problem you have with candlesticks is that they're made, even now, they're reproducing them to a degree, they're using the same techniques, they're using a workbench with a vice and they're hacking it out with a chisel. And the first thing you have to do when you find these candlesticks is you have to look at the bottom. What you want to see is one piece of wood, one trunk. If you see a laminated candlestick, I'm going to show you one. It's later. This is made of blocks. You see? They're just square laths or lengths glued together, and then you have corresponding joins. That is a design of a 1650 candlestick, and this would have been made in 1900 or 1910, but it's not 18th century. That's just one of them. I'll leave it here for fun. We'll bring another one into the equation. This is another example where they made the candlestick and then they've applied a plinth either at manufacture or at time of retail. Dealers often put another layer on to bulk them out, make them higher, but it means you can't see underneath. This is a Baroque gold leaf candlestick, but it's not a pricket stick, it is a candlestick. And it's very likely that this top is 1920 and it's been put on to a candlestick that was previously a pricket stick. This will be 1980s, this cut tin. So you have these things and they, they go on a journey. The items go on a journey. This one is like that one without the, the platform. So you, you can see what I mean. This one is meant to be an 18th century one. But then this one's not very heavy and it has no metal on the top. This one is a Baroque style candlestick. I would say that's 1900. You can see how difficult this is, it's desperately hard. Desperately hard. These are not carved out of a block of wood at the bottom. The whole thing is turned and they've applied three legs. Very easy with three legs, three legs doesn't model. It's a profile cut from a plank with a later tin top, no pricket candlestick. They're going to be 1900, 1910. You can see that this is really just sickeningly difficult. This is a, a rock style candlestick with a later top, Victorian top from 1900. This is 1960. People in shops expected it. The dealers would make them. It's made out of a tin can. This is a better bottom, three sides, chamfered corners, carving. The body 
That body is 18th century. You can see the chisel marks. It's gone, the gesso's gone down to the wood, woodworm. Pleasing bottom. So what, we, what we're saying, what we're, what we're finding is we've got all these candlesticks which have gone through processes. This is a lovely bottom, one piece of wood carved out of one piece of wood. Provincial, basic finish. This was painted gold or silver originally. It's a recent finish to mimic the original. The prickets has gone. It's a, it's a Victorian metal top, but it's a good, you can see it's not new. So you have a, a candlestick base from 1770 perhaps. Um, I'm judging on the antiquity and the weight and the feel, very, very heavy. And you have a later top. That would have been in a house and at some stage someone said, let's, let's get rid of the, the spike. Let's, let's put a modern candle holder on the top and they would have put that on. This shows original silver paint. So, you know, this just goes on interminably. Um, on and on and on. This one was another, that's another pair, damaged top. Evidently old. This one is evidently old. Very, very basically carved on the bottom. But some skill, in, some skill involved in making that. That's not something you can just cobble together in a few hours. That is, um, to make that, you're talking about a good craftsman. It's, it's 10 days. It's 10 days work. <clears throat> this one I feel is later. The profile, it doesn't have this early look. It has a more bulbous, bulbous, chubby look. I would say... That one there is made in 1860-70 on the design of an earlier candlestick. Those appear to be original. I, I, I would expect that to be mo uh, moulded gesso just put on the front. I don't think these would have been plain. I think it was made with that. The, the top again is one of these 20th century or late Victorian metal, me metal holders put on the top. Um, I'm not sure that would, would have ever, ever, ever had a prick at that one. I'm not sure. The colour is a common colour, it's a bowl, B-O-L-E colour, uh, clay colour, I think it's lovely. That's got a malted cross on, that's really popular for a malting fire. These are English, English brass candlesticks. This is the prickets I was talking about, they all had prickets originally, all the, all the significant ones. Those however are prickets on a mid to late 18th century English candlestick. So they're a, a bit of a washed up thing over here. These are Edwardian or Victorian metal candlesticks, French. Note the very narrow diameter of the candle. They're like tapers, peculiar. Lovely, lovely bases. Stick them on there. And now I'm running out of candlesticks. I'm going to show you these. These are Maltese candlesticks. They have the same paint as the other one I showed you. They have the platform so you can't inspect the underside. I think those don't have such a globular look as the other red one. I think this pair have an early time of date. I would say they're 1840, 50. This is a nice, this bit of molded, uh, it probably is carved wood. It's carved with a gesso, uh, acanthus perhaps, I don't know. We have this tin work. This is not basic tin work. I think that is not necessarily original, but that pushes it back some, somewhat. This Victorian um, candle holder, I think that would have been a pricket to start with. This chamfered corner, it really is a beautiful old design. Um, Baroque elements, scrolls, extended by the platform, made to look more meaty. It's heavier, it's not going to fall over. And there's a pair. So in range, you have single candlesticks and double candlesticks in price range. You're going to find very few pairs of candlesticks now. If you find a pair of candlesticks in a salary or a dealer in America or in England, uh, if it's of any age, 
you, you're going to be paying a lot of money for them. They're, they're unpleasantly expensive for such a simple thing. You have to just face it. And if you want a pair of good candlesticks, you have, I'm afraid, just to buy them. Um, large candlesticks. The, these are very, very big candlesticks. And they are uh, obviously old candlesticks. The, the, the finish is a worn, a, a worn gilded finish. And I'm going to just, before I finish, I'm going to just go into some more, more detail on these. At first glance, they look a little wooden. They look too crisp. They look too new. But when you get up close, you know this is a very, just a very good pair of 18th century candlesticks. Yellow. I want you to look at the yellow. Why is it yellow? Well, what they used to do, they used to get the pine carcass. They used to put the, the gesso on it. They used to sand the gesso down. It would take a very fine, flat finish. They would apply a paint with glue, a bowl, B-O-L-E. There they use a yellow bowl. You don't see that very often. And that means that when they put the, the gold on, or the silver on, if it rubs through, you're not seeing white, you're seeing a yellow. But I think here, what they've done is they've used a silver, a silver leaf. Um, it's gone black. Um, you can see some silver here, it's a re residues. It's possible there was silver panels and gold raised relief but it's really worn down and this wear is not an applied finish this is a it is a worn finish you, 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 there are fakers and there are ways of antiquing and distressing but this this is no candlestick that's been cobbled together this is war wear it really just through air, atmosphere, air atmospheric wear people cleaning it people handling it like i'm handling it uh, with some woodworm and they either lost the prickets and they've lost the entire sconce s-c-o-n-c-e they've lost the entire sconce i think there would have been a, a cricket originally and i think that that would have been changed in the victorian era to a, a candle holder with a with a, a tray like nearly all the other ones the reason i'm not too fussed about that is you, no one's going to use them as a candlestick anymore usually um, and decoratively, they, they still have the appeal. Really, what you're buying is, is the is the actual candlestick. If you were inclined to um, put a candle top on, then I'm afraid, short of having someone make it, what you'd have to do is buy another pair of candlesticks like these and, and cut the top off and do a transplant. I know it's vandalism. But it would make the these tops on there would be really smart because of the size because they, they are 18th century because there's two these are going to be not, not eye watering expensive but they're going to be very expensive you'll see when we get around to putting all the price on the website you'll see what i'm talking about anyway so i i say goodbye from the forest of candlesticks bye bye